Yeah. Next is from, this is a terrible question. Okay, I, I, I'm I, not I, I, I can't wait for this. And William Molina, you're William. a longtime listener. You're trolling us. You got to be trolling us with this. You got to be trolling us. Okay, because this is going to get suspended. Right. <laughs> the subject is from William Molina Jr. The subject is 18 best belt designs in wrestling history. Dear K100 crew, I came across an article by Wesley Avendato highlighting the most iconic belt designs in wrestling history. I'm eager to hear your thoughts and opinions on this list. Your insights would be greatly appreciated. The IJWP United States Championship, the NXT UK Tag Team Championship, the AW International Championship, the NXT UK Championship. But I'm not reading all these. This is so <laughs> stupid. If mean, you actually think that I care about belt designs, no. I, Conan does not either, and neither does Joe. You're suspended. Joe might. Joe might. Any of these you like, Joe? Uh, me, no. No, not at all. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me. I'll tell you which one. I'll tell you which one I like. That million dollar championship with the money sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, bro, absolutely. let me tell you. You really got to be a nerd, like geek type. You know, like to even. I remember when Cody Rhodes was like, "Oh, you know, when I go back to WWE, I want to win the the. I think he called it the the one with the eagle design." And I was like, "Wing, belt? Yeah, which belt is that?" Like who would even know that? Maybe I don't know. I don't. There's I couldn't a lot of tell belt. you any. Yeah, there's, right. there's, there's a lot of belt marks that do know and collect them. You know, this is, this stuff is important to them. Next, some yellow hard like hat. A wrestling nerd. Yeah. The subject <laughs> is the return of Maven. The current king of wrestling YouTube is no longer Jim Cornette or Booker T, but it's Maven. The guy's been uploading videos for less than a month, and he already has videos that have crossed or close to nearing the one million view count. It's absolutely crazy. Good for him, but. It not for you guys. Two Maven questions. What do you think about his insanely rapid rise on YouTube? And have either of you crossed paths with him in the past? And if so, any Maven stories? I've never met Maven before. To be honest. Maybe I have met him, but I just very brief inter verbal interaction, maybe. Um, and I, his rise on YouTube, I can't comment on because I've never seen any of his videos. Yeah, I was scrolling through and, and, you know, he is new on YouTube. I don't remember what the topic was, but I saw that it was like, boom, 500,000. And I'm like, how how did that happen? You know, I, I don't know. I don't want to cast any aspersions. Maybe it's just a successful channel. Interesting. It's from George Kittle. Biden University 85 at Gmail. Is this actually the, the actual George K Kittle? Hmm. Subject is Lucha Libre. Um, <laughs> Hello, gang and disco. I was curious as to how it works with the contracts in AAA and how AEW selects the Lucha wrestlers that they do. Penta is one of my personal favorites, along with his brother Ray Phoenix, and her products are what it's like to be working in America for as long as they have. I've met Penta personally, and he's a hell of a guy. But that being said, so many luchadors coming to AEW seem to just be lost. When you look at guys like Commander Bendito, they just seem lost in the U.S. style. Even El Hijo de Vikingo seems to just be asking a genuine interaction with the crowd, lacking a genuine, in, lacking a genuine interaction with the crowd. They can do the moves, but something's missing. And isn't the language barrier seen by wrestlers such as Andrade, Lucha Brothers, etc.? How does AEW select the luchadors that they do? And do they ever ask for Conan's personal opinion? I feel like he could pr provide a big help to them in that aspect, or they just kind of pick and choose as they please. And how do the dates in Mexico work when signed to AEW? Thanks again. It's George from California. This is actually George Kittle. The San Francisco That's him. 49ers sign. Is it him? That's him. Yeah, it's got, I mean, it's a, it's a very, uh, I'm assuming, but it says here that when the Niners played in Mexico City in 2022, Kittle was yeah, he met him. I know he met him, right. Right, yeah. so that's got to be I don't, George from California. I don't know if this is a troll, though. I don't know if this is a tr tr somebody pretending to be him. But, but if it is, anyone anyone do that? thank you for <laughs> listening to our show, George. Yeah, what's up? Uh, thanks again, George from California. P.S. What can you tell me about the luchador who walks like he's on the moon? And he's got the crying emoji. All right. That's gravity. You're going to get to know gravity. <laughs> okay. First of uh, all, I don't, I don't think this is George Kittle, but I <laughs> will say, um, uh, okay, there were a lot of questions. Hit me up one by one. Um, okay. Uh, how does AAA select the okay, luchadors? Okay, let, let me just say one thing. There was a comment. How does, AW, how does, how does AEW okay. select the luchadors that they do? Okay, before we get there, let me just say this. He said that guys like Commander and Bandito. Oh, oh here. They can you know, do the moves, but something is missing. And it isn't the language barrier seen by wrestlers such as Andrade, Lucha Brothers, etc. Right. So, so well, guys like, some guys that don't have a connection to the crowd yeah. like other guys do. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me go. Bandito is not lost in the U.S. style. He understands it very well. And Tony's a very big fan of his. 
Bro, Commander, I've said it a million times. They brought him up too quick. He needs to be seasoned a little more. He doesn't know the language. He's never been on major league TV. He, he's like, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's kind of still lost. He's still trying to find out what's going on. Bikingo is probably the most exciting wrestler in the world, but he also doesn't understand American culture, the language. He's learning the style still, but he'll pick it up. You know, he's, he's, he's an incredible wrestler. So those are the reasons for those guys. And then the question was, how do they select wrestlers in AEW? Well, they they hear that somebody's got, oh, did you hear Laredo and this guy had a good match, Commander? Oh, okay. And then they'll see a tape of him, and then they'll, they'll, they'll ask, hey, can we use these guys? And then some of them will sign a deal, and some of them won't. Some of them will be there just on dates, and some of them will have a contract. Most of, them, most of the people they've asked for are under contract. Bikingo isn't. Um, what can you tell him about the luchador who walks like he's on the moon? <laughs> Brutal. That's <laughs> let me kazoo that guy. Yeah. I can't believe that he didn't go up to somebody and say, Hey, do you think this is over? And somebody didn't say that's brutal. Right. And I can't believe he didn't see it on TV because everybody watches their match back, especially when you first started, and didn't think that was whack. You know, and I can't believe that after Joe made fun of you. And the people popped. You're still doing it. All right. So I think this. I think the. Per, this is two straight emails from two straight people pretending to be somebody. Okay. Because right. this one's from Ron Acuna the third. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. The subject, We're getting the trolls. Is, what, that's the right. The subject is greetings guy. from Atlanta. Greetings from right. Atlanta. Hello, right. fellas. Right. Long time right. listener. Right. Just for people that don't know about baseball, Ron Acuna is probably. The best player on the Braves, right? No, he's the best player well, in the National League. Right. He's Olsen, he's, he's, bro, he's, he's killing it yeah. right now. Yeah. But Acuna's the best player, and he's from Atlanta. Disco likes him. So somebody probably wrote his Ron Acuna. Greg Kittles, everybody knows, is Pentagon's boy. George so this Kittles, guy right, from yeah. California, yeah, mm. George Kittles, just wrote in, you know, I don't think right. he would write to us. Yeah. Hello, fellas. Long time listener, first time emailer. Love what you do, and, and the live Q&A on YouTube is killing it for you guys. With that, being, with that being said, I just want to chime in with a few questions. Conan, did you train Commander? Because I truly believe that he may be one of the worst, if not the worst wrestler on national TV. He botches almost every move, doesn't have an ounce of charisma. He's a, he has a dumb name that doesn't fit his gimmick and takes an hour to balance anytime he does a move. I know you say he's super green, but do you really think he'll ever actually get over to the mainstream media? Disco, my question for you is, did you ever talk to WWE once your WCW contract came to an end? Always thought you would have been a good mouthpiece or manager or mid-card comedy act. Joe, my question for you is, I've heard your other Mark podcast hating on Billy. He's a scumbag, but with you spouting off, when's the boxing match set between the two, you two? That's, that's, that's Joe answer his question first. Um, when is the boxing match between you and Billy? I don't think that's a likely possibility. Uh, ben Hamina already wanted to do that, and Billy turned it down. I think I would say that I, I would do it. I don't think Billy would agree, and I'm not calling him a the saying Billy would go, why would I do that? So, right. and when, who yeah, would go to it? You know, I'm not an idiot. I don't think that people would even want to watch that. Well, all I the guys from get my go, all the addicted to the blade fans, all yeah. the guys that listen to your show on Raven, um, yeah. all the K-100 podcasters. Listeners? Yeah. They might just um, see you get your ass. Uh, my answer is yeah. I talked to Johnny. I had a couple of conversations with Johnny Ace, but I never, uh, I never went to WWE. Um, what about your Conan? Do you think that, um, uh, Commander will get over to the mainstream me- mainstream media someday. Yeah, bro. He just said in his letter, he's super green. What do you expect then? The guy to be right. polished? He's right. new. He doesn't know the style. He doesn't know the language. He doesn't even know half the wrestlers, bro. It's not like, you know, come to Mexico. It's like coming to Mexico and being green and not knowing the language and not knowing the style. You're not going to look good, you know? You know, the, I mean, I, I don't understand what you complaining about yeah i didn't put him on tv in the united states he works for me in mexico and he he's super over all right so we're gonna we're gonna bury Dur- durbin here this is mike durbin okay right um subject is mailbag suspensions you guys, mm. you guys have been suspending a lot of people from the mailbag recently don't you think that might be a bit counterproductive if you're eliminating five to ten letters each week, it's a handful of YouTube videos that hugely could massively clickbait to earn you four gentlemen lots of money. You never know which ones will hit 100,000 views. 
If you believe what the no microphone using bipolar lisp having Asperger boys poster boy claims about you guys, both Conan and DI spent all the money that they earned during the most profitable time in wrestling history. Glenn is forced to have a real job, and Conan, you can't even afford to pay for betting tips to win money to buy your wife a birthday present. <laughs> so again, I ask, why are you suspending so many people when it's ultimately reducing the amount of YouTube videos you put up? Perhaps you should consult with the YouTube wizard himself, the great Huji. Okay, that, well, we're going to suspend you, okay, for this stupid email. Joe, how many emails do we have this week? Oh, my I know, God. Like 40. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah man. 40. That was okay, so, like... so, so, so this is Mike. You are misinformation. Okay, because you think if we're eliminating five to ten, that, that's a, if we're eliminating five to ten letters, that that's that's bro, we're gaining, <laughs> like having more email than the week before. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Not so only that. So, not only right. that. How many people? How many people have actually come back and say, "I'm not suspended anymore." They understand right. it's part of the joke. Right. Suspensions uh, work. You're not on it. You're not on it somehow, and you've been listening to us for what five years or six years or whatever right. it is, right? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna kazoo you for putting over hugely. I gave you the night version of the ship there, and um, uh, bro, let me tell you something about Billy one more time. Never been to my house. Does not know how I live. And number two, the reason that I quit. Uh, betting and i did pay you whatever money that you i was supposed to the reason i quit betting is because you kept losing <laughs> the bet you would get joe am i right or not you're exactly right yes because i was doing it through joe yeah joe please a little well, comment here i think we were like two and four like it was it right. was brutal yeah it was yeah. not yeah so i'm not gonna keep you can't take a service and nipping like you have to be part of it yeah it's just too much of a pain follows all his picks it's, it's ridiculous yeah like he, he bets like a degenerate gambler like he gives like 10 plays a night and everything like you know quarter you all like right we'll give us one of the winners well as i said if he just stuck to his top plays he'd, he'd he'd be like he'd be doing better he'd be more have probably more respect in the gambling business you know so but, but and let me it. ask you one more question what was the last thing that durbin put at the end the ps that larry was uh, like? oh larry i would say something well wait he made a comment about larry i'd forget to read that Larry um, sounded mega bottom right when he was drunk. You sound mega bottom right even when you're not drunk. Boom. Yeah, you're suspended. Right, let's, let's do we have a music for, for a Durban suspension. I'm happy about this suspension. And I'm yeah, happy that the Durban, condemnation movie. Yeah. I'm gonna condemn it, Durban. Okay, for trying to condemn wow, us. That's first time. <laughs> Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> Next one's from Trent Arnold. The subject is Disco. Sub Cameron Hunter, the question's from my main man, Disco. I'm rewatching old episodes of WCW 2000. And I'm at the point of the Mama Luke storyline, entertaining stuff, by the way. You had some cool outfits that you wore each week. How often did you go shopping for new clothes? And where did you get most of the stuff, The stuff, uh, if you remember? Um, I know exactly where it was. It was a place, place called The Attic right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. It used to be a vintage clothing store, and they would actually make outfits for me there. So, huh. yeah, it's good, good stuff. It was, it was, it was Cool. Yeah, the, the attic in Vegas. I don't think it exists anymore. So, but it was funny too when I came to work at Sapphire. Um, one of the girls that uh that works at the the, the one of the managers. Um, her mom actually owned the attic. So like oh. she was, her mom was the one was making my outfits for me and stuff and things. So that's that's kind of crazy. So 